The Story Keepers, Starlight Escape, Chapter Two. Risky Road. What do you mean by that? Calm down, Zach, Ben said. Our friends told me that if anyone can get us to Ostia safely, it's Milo. I don't see how, Zach said, becoming even more agitated. He talks to that old horse as if the horse can talk back to him. He calls the horse Regis. What's wrong with that? asked Justin, who was particularly fond of horses. Yeah, chimed in Anna and Cyrus. I like Milo, said Cyrus. Me too, said Anna, looking defiantly at Zach. Ben did not like seeing the children ganging up on Zach and was about to interrupt when he heard Milo say, You've got it all wrong, Regis. See, Ben, whispered Zach. He's talking to the horse again. We go left at the next junction, not right, continued Milo. Ben and Helena and the children just looked at each other, then at Zach. Oh, well, Ben whispered, just as long as we get there safely. Zach went back to his perch next to Milo and scanned the countryside, looking for more Roman soldiers. Ben and Helena were part of a secret underground network of Christians who risked their lives to help one another and to spread the stories of Jesus. They would meet in homes or even in caves, telling of Jesus' work. Danger was always with them. These children have had to grow up fast, said Helena, stroking the hair of little Marcus as he slept in Ben's lap. Yes, said Ben, they've been through more danger in their young lives than most Romans see in a lifetime. Yes, Helena said as she snuggled back against Ben's shoulder. We sometimes forget just how young they are, especially Marcus. Poor little mite, he looks worn out. Ben smiled at Helena and leaned back against the side of the wagon. They were not the children's parents. The children had been separated from their own parents when the Emperor Nero had ordered the city of Rome to be burned, then blamed the Christians for the fires. In the days and weeks that followed the fires, Ben had found the children living on the streets, dirty and hungry. They didn't know if their parents were alive or dead. Ben had taken them in to his warm bakery and given them a home. As the wagon moved on toward Ostia, Anna, Cyrus, and Justin sat together in the back of the wagon, staring up at the blue-black night sky. Thousands of stars flickered in the darkness. Look, said Anna wistfully, it's so beautiful. The stars are so bright tonight. I've never seen so many of them. Why don't they look like this at the bakery? Because there are too many lights, said Helena, and smoke from fires. The air in Rome isn't clear like it is out here in the country. Little Marcus stirred and yawned and opened his eyes. It was getting late and he was very tired. Ben, why are we going all the way to Ostia for a story meeting? He asked, then snuggled back against Ben's soft punch to await the answer. Because it's getting too dangerous in Rome, Marcus. As more and more people become Christians, Nero sends even more soldiers to try to arrest us. Oh, said Marcus sleepily. I miss the bakery. Oh, I like it there, especially by the oven. It's warm, and I can always have a piece of bread or pastry. I like pastries better. I'm hungry. Well, Ben, said Helena, it sounds as though Marcus is going to get as big a tummy as you. Ben laughed as Marcus cuddled in. We'll eat soon, Marcus. It's only a short ride, and we'll go back to the bakery as soon as it's safe. Promise? I promise, and I won't let you out of my sight until we do. Marcus sighed contently and went back to sleep. Eh, what's that you say, Regis? Milo said to his horse. Roman guards, you say? Milo sniffed the air. Well, I sure don't smell any guards. Zach rolled his eyes and turned to look back at the others. Well, that's a relief. Milo doesn't smell any. Guards, shouted Cyrus, pointing out the back of the wagon. It's another patrol. Three horsemen.